towards the end of the movie, some of the guys are talking about something, and he's floating in the back. <laughs> he floats into the room, legs kick it out, and then he floats back out. Welcome to Forever Midnight, a joyful discussion of horror and cinema with your hosts, Jeff Colburn, Josh Staples, and Brian Henderson. Eleven fifty-five. Almost midnight. Enough time for one more story. One more story before twelve. Just to keep us warm. It feels like a little echoey in here. It is. Oh, it is. It's a it's a room with a strange acoustics. Hello, hello. We're out of the studio today. We're on location at my house. Yo, hi, uh, I'm going to call it the breakfast nook from now on. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Josh whipped us up an epic breakfast when we got here. So nice. I'm glad you enjoyed it, boys. And this is one of rare few, few times we do this like in the morning. We always do this at like midnight around that time. <laughs> right, but sometimes our evenings are busy. Yeah. So we can't squeeze it in. So, hey. So bright and early. Here we are. Here we are. We a 9.30 a.m. Wonderful breakfast. I've had four hours of sleep. <laughs> Well, Brian, <laughs> when do you start winding down at night? Like, There's, when- no wind down. There's no wind down. I'm winding up while I'm going, closing my eyes to sleep. Yeah. My eyes are more open than closed during my life, but that's fine. Sleep when you're dead. <laughs> you know, Which I, might be next week. Yeah. I, I, I used to think the same thing when I was 30 years old, Brian. <laughs> what are you doing? As I approach 50, it's probably not a good idea. But now but- I'm like, sleep when you're sleepy. <laughs> the thing about, I, I, I'm realizing that like depression is a pretty rad sleep aid. Only if you don't want to be sleeping when other humans are sleeping. That's right. the that's the thing. I sleep fine at two p.m. Oh really? Maybe you're, maybe it's a no, you're a nocturnal man. I think I have nocturnal emissions. <laughs> Does that My eye. They keep you up all night. <laughs> Yeah, just crying. <laughs> I'm emitting tears. Does that count? Yeah. And I've had so many of those. <laughs> it's definitely what's keeping me up for sure. <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's really echoey in here, huh? Paul, Paul, G's listeners. If I could tape some pillows into the corners. I see, guys, I have vaulted ceilings. This is how I live. <laughs> I mean, I'm just very luxurious. Listeners, yes. wait 30 minutes while we uh, fix this. <laughs> <laughs> well, Josh, it's your week to pick. Yes. Photo, uh, movie, not photos. You pick photos too, but <laughs> moving photos. I, they're, they're motion photos. There's like <laughs> millions of photos in this movie. <laughs> Tell us why you picked this movie. Well, I picked Studio 666 by the Foo Fighters. The movie, the movie that's directed by the Foo Fighters. <laughs> you, I never thought I'd ever hear those words together. <laughs> this is not just a creepy rock and roll house. It allows spiritual entities to cross into our world. Dave Grohl's been possessed. Now he's on a murderous rampage. Any chefs in the group? I'm pretty handy on a grill. Ah! So fucking juicy. Is the album almost done? It's killer. My latest guilty pleasure. You're welcome, music. <laughs> I wouldn't have picked it if I hadn't watched it. I was going to watch it anyway because I am. I wanted to see this movie. I am a fan of like Movie's the tenacious a D's. Strong term for it. <laughs> We're gonna have to get some words. I mean, you look at my that's that's my DVD shelf. It ain't yeah. so big. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of DVDs up there. There's two tenacious D DVDs up there. <laughs> Oh, shit. There's the Pick of Destiny, and then there's the Anthology. <gasps> Both so, yeah. I mean, at least one has Dave Grohl prominently featured as the devil. Right, right, right. I, I forgot w- about he was the devil in those. Yeah. Or that. Or and that one. Just at least the that's one. That's Tenacious D, or, or the Pick of Destiny. Right? Yeah, and he played drums on the other stuff, too. So <gasps> That is, okay, all right. Right? So I've seen him with pointy teeth and wild <laughs> eyes and his tongue sticking out a lot <laughs> in movies. And I saw it. 
and I fucking loved it. I saw it with my parents. Mm -hmm. My 75 year old parents (laughs) were like, and this just shows you the relevance of the Foo Fighters in 2022. My parents like, I'm reading David Grohl's album right now on my audio (laughs) books. Gary's like, I read an article in the New York Times about David Grohl. David Grohl. (laughs) So formal. You know I love my, my parents are the best. I love my parents to death. The last movie we saw yeah. Before fucking COVID in the theater for me was Invisible Man. Oh, yeah. We saw it with my stepfather. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's right. I yeah. forgot about that. I wrote an essay about how I love my stepfather in horror movies in the book, My Favorite Horror Movie 2. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Available on, on two, Amazon. Or, uh, yeah, on Amazon. Available on Amazon. And we all have essays in that, by the way. Have you ever talked about that? We have a couple yeah, times, a but yeah. But yeah, if you haven't, it's a great book. There's a ton of amazing essays in there from all kinds of people from the horror arena. And horror adjacent. This movie is... <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to say this movie's horror adjacent. This is a fucking horror movie. It's a, it's a horror comedy. It's it a is comedy a, and first. I, <laughs> and I have to say that, like, I was really afraid that this movie was going to be serious. And that's why I was so against it. There's no way it was going to be serious. Oh, yeah, I knew it was going to be but serious. But you know, it's got to have it be somewhat funny because even though the Foo Fighters are not comedians... They're like, they're funny for rock dudes. Oh, yeah. See, I, I, oh, yeah. I guess I just don't like follow them enough or, or like know that enough about them that I thought it would be. <laughs> I don't either. I thought it would be funny by accident. Yeah. You know, like that's like, what I was afraid of. So I might have owned a CD of The Color and the Shape mm-hmm. and I might own one Foo Fighters LP because I got to record at the Studio 606, which is their actual studio. Uh-huh. And they had a shelf of them and I got to take one. It's worth a lot of money. <laughs> and those, those are the Foo Fighter records I have ever owned. Yeah. And I might have listened to The Color and Shape all the way through once. I don't think I've ever listened to a Foo Fighters record all the way through except at the record store a couple well, times. What's the one with that, uh, Everlong and no, uh, that's My the color Hero? And the that's, shape. That's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's the one that I actually owned and listened to quite a bit when it came yeah. out. Yeah, it's a great was, record. what, 30 years yeah. ago? 20 years ago, yeah. yeah. So that was the one. But like since then, I mean, mm, right. whatever. I mean, they're fine. It's not, they, they have some jams like... Yeah, the, the, a song like they were rec- the movie they're recording their tenth album, and on their tenth album they actually have a pretty dope ass jam on it. I haven't heard the whole record, but yeah. I've heard the, this one single. And it's sick as fuck, and they recorded at this fucking house that the movie shot. So at. they actually recorded at the house, yeah, right? Totally. So I have uh, so that all that all that's real. And don't get me wrong, that within their catalog, real. I know they have a ton of great songs. They have the Wasting Light record is killer. Yeah, like I know that I haven't don't own it. I haven't gotten into it, but I know there's great shit. Throughout. Yeah, this, this movie fucking- actually made me go home and like. Listen to the Foo Fighters. In my opinion, funny. they don't have great records, but they have great songs. Sure. Like, yeah. If you did like a greatest of, it might be fucking ripping. Yeah, the great because that's why I was. This is Foo Fighters, so I was listening to like their mm-hmm. their jam jams. Yeah. yeah, and it's good. They it's have, good. They got stuff. some big like arena yeah. rock yeah. kind of jams. It is though. Like I think you said it maybe three episodes ago. It is like the safest rock. It is like, safe. Yeah, which is not a compliment. <laughs> Rock right. shouldn't be that safe. Yeah. But what I like about this movie, I took my parents to it because they thought it was going to be safe. And in the first <laughs> fucking 30 seconds, a woman gets her head smashed by with a claw hammer. Dude. The, <laughs> one of those violent things I've ever seen. The gore in this movie is pretty fucking top notch. I loved it. Yeah. It was yeah. so, there was a, I went to see it a second time last night oh, for wow. one scene. Which scene? The scene where fucking Taylor gets his head cut in half. Oh, with the symbol? <laughs> oh my That's God. And I saw dope. something I didn't see the first time. Hmm. And this is the best scene in the movie. And spoilers, <laughs> but I think you might have, it might be in the trailer. But when Taylor gets his head cut in half with a symbol flying across a room, as the bottom half of his body is sliding down the wall, Dave's flipping it off. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even down. see that the first time. It's all the way down. By the way, this is the part where his eyes are not. He's flipping his torso and legs <laughs> off as it slides down the wall. Yep. I, I went because I, I wanted to see that another time immediately. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought that was amazing. And that was an effect. That was flawless. Yeah. Flawlessly executed. Yeah. What's funny is that they totally, they filmed this thing in secret during COVID. So like, right. you, if you hear that, you think that like, they're going to be doing the fucking makeup effects there or, or like, you know, <laughs> right. but, but it's obviously they had a full crew of people and they had all these, you know. Yeah. They hired a film crew for <laughs> yeah. it for sure. And a director the, and everything. The weird thing about this movie, and it sounds like I'm going to talk shit about, which I have a lot of good things to say. Just put that out there, Josh. I have <laughs> sure. a lot of good things to say. Well, I, I mean, there's a lot of bad things about this yeah. movie. Well, that's, yeah. the, that's the fucking weird thing about it is it, I feel like it's on one end, it's extremely professional and totally legit. And on the other spectrum, it's like the most fucking janky budget. <laughs> like it just like home movie bullshit. And same with like the comedy and the horror. Like everything is like the extreme ends of everything. Like really good and also really shitty. Yeah. Just bouncing back and forth at, at a hyper pace. And Dave's right in the middle because he's probably the best actor in the movie. Probably, yeah. yeah. But he also 
there's dialogue that should have been fucking cut. Like that yeah. should have should have been gone. It's yeah. so it's, much dialogue should have been gone. It's so crazy. Like just across the board. Like yeah, the writing, the comedy, the horror, the just the recording, the the sound, like everything. Like one minute it sounds everything sounds nice and crisp and clear, and then. And then all of a sudden, it sounds like they recorded their audio on, on an iPhone. That is something that I... It's like, what? That's a complaint I have with what this movie. Happened? Like, this is a major motion picture. It's in theaters. It's the biggest band in the world, right? Yeah, Arguably. Right. Totally. The, them, Radiohead, and... Uh, is it, if you don't want to admit peppers? it, they are, though. They're fucking <laughs> yeah. huge. They are the They're hugest band in the world. Huge. Yeah. They're not as legendary as Nirvana, but they are fucking yeah. humongous. If Nirvana were to tour now... They would certainly outsell the Foo Fighters concerts, no problem. But <laughs> Foo Fighters have been doing it for fucking twenty years. Yeah, no, they're doing stadiums and shit. Yeah, like they're, they're fucking and killing they're, it. They're they're always, of course, and they're packing shit out. So they're yeah. huge. So it's gonna be a big release. I'm surprised. I'm honestly surprised it made it in the theaters. I was too. I, told <laughs> Jeff, I was Seriously. like, I can't believe it made it in the theaters because you automatically think these rock stars are making a horror movie. That shit's going right to fucking streaming. And I will say, firstly, it is for being a motion picture of this size. By the biggest rock band with one of the nicest studios in the world. I got to see, I was just there in November recording some bass, some, some drum tracks with the Velveteen. Next door, they built a sound stage, not a sound stage, but like a sound mixing room for movies. Like oh. a state of the art mixing room. It's nice. unreal, the place. Yeah. Wow. This movie sounds like shit. <laughs> when maybe they, it was because they were just doing it during COVID and just doing what they were working with. It's no excuse. Because yeah. it's I, the part that sounds like shit to me is when they like the stick clicks into the song sound bright and great. When they play the music, it sounds like fucking tin can. I know. Also, it's, it's like super compressed time. and quiet. It's like what the fuck? How happened? is the music quieter than the stick clicks? And well, you're a rock band. This is what yeah, you do. You and need like, to blast when you get to the music part, like then, then you're gonna turn it down. Like, and the weird what? part is, is yeah. the mix though for the credits, which is like the same music, sounded and mixed the, fine. And the incidental music, Bumping. the score sounded huge. Bumping. Yeah, and the dialogue huge. Yeah. When he's like. When, at the end of the movie, when Dave Grohl's speaking in like three octaves, all low and gravelly, yeah, that was Sounds booming. Fine. Yeah, but yeah, but why when they go to play a song like you were saying, all of a sudden it goes and gets quiet? It was so insane how small it, it didn't was. make any sense. You would like you say would go the opposite. You want that to be the loudest. You part. want that to be the it's the fucking it's the band. rock jam. It's the biggest like rock any band. Any other yeah. rock band that's ever made a horror film that has like music in it that when playing music, it's going to be super yeah, loud. I saw Purple so Rain like, in the theater for a last professional month. Professional record and for one of the biggest bands uh, ever. Why? Why? How did that? How did that slip through the cracks? How did they let that? How did that detail mix? go away? <laughs> like, not, I'm saying, it's so fucking weird. How like it's good and bad all at the same time. Like the worst and the I don't know. It's so it's, it's a very weird, strange. It's such a weird movie for for a band. Like, I mean, I I mentioned I saw the, I saw Purple Rain in the theater in, when I was in Portland in January, and it was huge sounding. When the music came in, it was the biggest, most impressive part of yeah. the movie. Well, that's 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 when the music should be loud, right? Is when yeah. like a band's playing like. You want it to be to feel like you've changed what's happened in the room, right? It should be, or, a, yeah. Like there's people really talking, high. then all of a sudden, oh, there's a band playing. It's a big problem in this movie because they do play a lot of the right. same rad metal song over and over again. Yeah. The best song in the whole movie. I wish that was a new Foo Fighters record. I wish it was a forty-minute record well, on the record. They're releasing a whole album. Are they going to release that song? They, they have just, to, they, right? They, but that song's not out yet. But there is a single that's just crazy oh. fucking metal song. Yeah. From the movie, mm-hmm. that's like so. Like they're 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 do and, and there's a whole I read articles about like he recorded this in crazy like crazy metal album Good. as Dream Window. They should oh, I, the Foo Fighters. Absolutely. Dream Absolutely. Widow, right? Dream Widow. I think is it Dream? Oh, I thought it was Dream, Dream Widow. Win- oh, I thought okay. I keep thinking so, it was yes. Dream Dream Window. So you don't have to do the editing. Let's say it again. <laughs> Dream Widow. <laughs> yeah, I was like I was like because after like I said after the show. Me and Jeff got out, and I walked home. I was like, "Oh, I gotta listen to fucking Foo Fighters now," you know. And then this single is the top of their thing. But I was like, "But this says Dream Widow. Like, what the fuck? Like, but it's it was fucking rocking. Holy you know, shit! Play March of March of the Insane. <laughs> that's that's funny. Is there vocals and shit? <laughs> yes, I'm talking about. Sick. It's dope. Yeah, this might be the best Foo Fighters record. Right? <laughs> this might trump the color and the shape. But that's because the last song they played is in the credits, the Foo Fighters song. Yeah. Oh my God, is that a bad song? <laughs> it's, it's a well-produced fucking straight up pop jam, but it is a bad yeah. song. Yeah. That's a, I, when they did the fucking a, a Foo, Foo Fighters thing. I, I love that documentary they did. It was called uh, Sonic Highway. Uh-huh. Sonic about, about recording in different studios, but all the different studios yeah. in all the different cities. All right, man. Such an amazing documentary, to, like one-on-ones with all these amazing people and engineers and stuff. And then the worst part was the song they wrote 
at the end and performed. Ouch. And you're like, oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> I loved everything about this. And then you wrote a crap song and recorded it in that studio. Oh, and then the lyrics are over. Oh, God, it's so bad. Yeah. I love, there's something about like aging rock stars, which I love. Like, like those guys all started out on, you know, like in reputable areas of rock, right? Oh, for sure. Punk and metal and, and you know, like. And it, oh, it God, spans yeah. the fucking, like, the pedigree, all genres. Every yeah. one of those guys. Yeah. So it's like smears from the germs, right? And uh-huh. yeah. shiflets from no use f- yeah, for a name. Yep. Fucking. Taylor, well, not really. Taylor's but, from being courted by Dave, but he was Alanis he was Morissette. Alanis Morissette, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you got Nate from Sunny Nate Day. Nate from Sunny Day, right. And William from Sunny Day before, before yeah. they got another yeah, like from Nirvana. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, yeah, Nirvana. I forgot about him, yeah. yeah. Like, so you, you, this insane, like, you know, it's just like... Super it's, group. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like a super group who, like... But it's funny, like, so you look at these guys, and they're... <laughs> When they come on screen at first, I haven't looked at the Foo Fighters in forever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, they got old. Like, these guys are fucking old. I'm old, but they're old. You know, like, it's, like, funny to see, like. <laughs> they're, like, four years older than me. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Which I was funny because, like, the, the guy who's the worst actor in the whole movie. Pat. Fucking schmearing all over the you place. You think so? Yeah. Yes. Big time. But, but the thing, I, there's big something time. I love and hate about Pat. Like, I don't know what it is about his dumb face, but I love it and hate it at the same I, time. I think he's so fucking cool, but after watching this movie, he, he's gummed down a few wrongs. Well, I think that's part of he it. He was so <clears throat> horrible he's in just it. And it drove me nuts because I, I wanted him to be so much better because I love him so much. There's parts that I think he does my favorite things. Like the, when the he, screaming? When he's scared, <laughs> he's the funniest person yeah, in the movie. Yeah, and sure. when he was like, when he was incensed about Dave like waking him up in the night, he's like, God, you're such a dick. <laughs> Sounds like the dude from the Californians. And Pat's 10 years older than all those fucking He's 62 years old. So he looks better than all those fools. Uh, yeah, so I tripped out when I saw how old he was because I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to forgive the, like, onesie pajamas that you wear, like, daily. Yeah. You know, like, like it's funny to see, like, the people's styles as they get older. And, like, and I'm doing yeah, that. Nate, like, I mean, Nate's the person I've met the most. I got to do a Sunday Day tour in 2009, so I've known Nate yeah. a bit and toured with him. And he's always just, like... He's the nerdiest guy in the Foo Fighters. Yeah, yeah. Like, he looks sweater like guy. fucking Mr. Rogers. And yeah. his sweaters are worse than ever in this movie. <laughs> he, and I love the guy. He's yeah. such a, like the sweetest guy. Yeah. Bad sweaters. Bad sweaters. Bad actor. Horrible actor. But I don't care. Because they can't have... You're not going to replace guys in the Foo Fighters with other guys to act. They're and not I, actors. No, but it's just like... But the, the, the Pat was so frustratingly... <laughs> Flat uh, stuff would happen like something gnarly as fuck would be happening, and you'd see him just be like, <laughs> "Man, just like like Dude? some weird, just like wow, that's wow." And just you know, the lines like, like, "Just wait, someone revive that man!" Like, come on, <laughs> CPR. Someone, anyone know CPR? Dude, think of how tired me or you are if we had to run. Yeah. Over and over again on the movie set. Pat's sixty-two. Let's not make excuses because there's scenes where he just all he has to do is stand there and then deliver a line, and he can't even do it. You can't even do it. I mean, none of the other guys can do it all that well either. I mean, girl can. He's doing it. Taylor can. Okay. Uh, what's I the thought other, Rami what, was pretty. What's funny. the other guitar player? Shiflet. Chris Shiflet. Yeah. yeah. He, did, he did okay. Yeah, I thought he was good. I thought he was Rami pretty good. Rami was goofy, but he did a good job. I, I thought he was terrible, but he tried. He I think tried he's like really he's the guy done hard. I guess he's the extraneous guy, right? He's a keyboardist. That, yeah. yeah. But he's I've never. The they gave him the most. Band. Shit to do though. He's, he's the funniest. I mean, he's like he of the characters. He, he fucking the funniest. Went and for also it. because he is like the newest guy and the like. I'm I'm gonna do whatever it takes to stay in the Foo Fighters guy. Yeah, like, he's gonna, gonna be rocking. You want me to like Yeah, yeah. I'm you there. don't remember me at any yeah. show, but you're gonna remember me from this fucking movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm twirling a feather. I'll do yeah. anything. <laughs> but dude, dude got the fucking dry hump, fucking Whitney Cummings. So you know, hey. pretty tight, pretty tight. You know, he got he got his. That, his... that is my favorite kill for sure. Oh, Can that's we talk an about awesome that? One. I was fucking... sitting. By the way, did I say I was sitting next to my mom and my stepfather? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, that was an amazing kill. Amazing kill. Yeah, the chainsaw through both partners, like the people fucking at mid fuck. Yeah, I was still trying to figure out how that, the, like, there was that much room. To I really, don't care to do that, but it's, I mean, don't care. A year overthinking it, dog. <laughs> My favorite part though is him sitting under the uh, laying under the bed, going kajuka kajuka kajuka, <laughs> kajuka kajuka kajuka, and they can't hear a thing. Yeah, <laughs> they're just going to town. But yeah, that was dope. That was fucking dope. That was amazing. The, the thing that, like, I as I've been thinking about this movie since we saw it, is that like really like this blows away any other rock and roll horror movie. This is I was right? like at the end of the day, is this the best rock and roll like this is horror movie? The newest as far as like November, as far as the most gore, at least there's some funny lines and the better music. I like, laughed like, a lot and legit rock stars like, and legit rock. legit yeah, yeah. rock. Not we're not Thor's cool and all, but like this is <laughs> these guys are on another yeah, level. I mean Thor's right. great and yeah. his music is awesome and he's legitimate, but fucking rock and roll nightmare is ridiculous. 
Right. And I love it. Yeah. But it's ridiculous. Yeah. And and nobody acts good in that movie. And there's no. not really, you know, it's no. it's so bad, it's good. Where this one, like, there's genuinely funny lines. Oh, dude, we were laughing. I was laughing the whole a lot. fucking time. I was we're surprised by how much I was laughing and by the gore. Yeah. I was like, oh, they're not going to go there. And then 30 seconds into the movie, they're like, they're fucking going there. <laughs> yeah, it's so violent. Like, that was, um, like, I looked at Jeff. I was like, holy, I did not expect that. I didn't like, expect we were that both, like, kind of stoked. We were like, okay, like, what do we got? Yeah, maybe going, we misjudged know? this. Yeah. yeah. My parents were like, oh, wow. And I was like, it's a horror movie, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Because <laughs> I was really dragging my feet when you said it. I was like, oh. Like, I, I was, I'd seen this, like, some images from this movie. I didn't watch a trailer. But I was just like, I don't know, man. This is going to suck. The, the overlying story is the tropiest possible yeah. outline, right? Of yeah. course it is. Yeah. Their first thought for a movie, and it stuck. Like, right. we got to go find a place. Haunted house. Fucking scary movie. The movie was called Spooky Movie up until they, <laughs> they made a poster for it. Oh, God. Uh, so, I but, think the place might actually be kind of haunted. I think because they were recording place. there. Like like I said, that one new song off the record was definitely recorded. They made a big deal about recording it on the stairway, and it gave this cool echo effect. Very cool, mm-hmm. right which is kind of shit they like put in the movie too. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think, I I think they were definitely inspired, like recording there, and then like place might actually be kind of haunted. And I think they were like that was the seed maybe of the right. idea of like fuck it, let's just do a horror movie here. Like we're recording here, it's fucking weird. Yeah. And then when he first when they first it. walk in the room and he's clapping and the fucking exorcist faces <laughs> are popping up, I'm like I'm like ooh, did you hear that? I love that shit. There's a yeah, there's a ton of just like little. Almost every horror element in this movie is a callback to some horror movie. Like right. there's a Hellraiser esque scene. There's a Freddy Krueger esque. There's a full on phantasm scene. Full on phantasm yeah. scene. Yeah. All all kinds of yeah. Exor- Exorcist with the fucking. But it is funny. Like the Zuzu like, face popping up. Yeah. The whole scene where like Krug, who's their Krug. Roadie. Yeah. That's it's not even subtle. Not even <laughs> no, subtle. It's Krug. <laughs> it's Carrie King from fucking Slayer. Yeah. yeah. And Which I was like, who gets burnt? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, but even the parts where he's like setting up the drums and he's like sitting right with the snare drum and he has to scoot it a quarter inch one way and then Dave hits it full volume like right by his head. Like, that is so funny. That is, yeah. And he's like, no, you got to move a quarter inch this way. He's like, just every time he's like flinching and oh, like he hates this guy so much. Yeah. And then Krug gets fucking fried because the ghost comes and zaps him. And it, <laughs> there's so, so many funny things around that. It's like, it reminds me of like, that's a solid chunk of comedy. Yeah. Because he's like, Krug dies and they're like, God, he's dead. And he's like, and Dave's like, no, wait, Krug, Jägermeister Krug, trying to revive him. <laughs> and he's like, we got to do it for Krug. And then when he does that phantasm scene where Krug keeps coming up, his head in the barbecue is fucking hysterical. Yeah. yeah. And then Krug comes floating into his bedroom at night, which I think is a great look. Totally. The glowing eyes and all that shit. Yeah, yeah. And he wakes up and he's like, Krug. <laughs> and I'm like, Krug is the funniest thing yeah. you could say yeah. there. That's how I was laughing my ass off. Like that shit, like, and, and that really, I mean, like, Grohl can actually, like, comedically act, I think. I like, think he's been comedically acting dude, since you know. his fucking first videos. The, the, I cannot stop thinking about him when he's, towards the end of the movie, some of the guys are talking about something and he's floating in the back. <laughs> he floats into the room, legs kick it out, and then he floats back out. <laughs> I, I, I had that on repeat in my yeah, fucking yeah. brain, and it's hysterical. Those little vignettes, hysterical. too. That scene where like, re- they're reading off the symptoms of like de- demonic possession. Right. And there's He's like, that one where he's floating. He floats and the, the other it one where he's like, it's an L sharp. Yeah. <laughs> and the vomiting where he's like, just vomit straight out of the side wall and goes, no more beer bongs for Davey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I, we really enjoy this, but I wonder like how people are taking it who aren't in this niche environment of like like-minded individuals who are musicians and artists of this kind of this nature because it feels it's so specific to this kind of group of people right or or at the very least yeah like you're saying like a musician that knows about recording music or like about so much of those like like, jokes are just like well you were talking about the the drum scene where you're just moving it an inch this way uh, back an inch that way half an inch like that is such a specific to musicians there's the jokes about the specific the specificity of the uh, drum position and it's hilarious for people like us and hitting it right next to the Brody's head is so rude (laughs) it's like the thing you but it should never do so real yeah I've done it before I'm like oh shit turn my bass on guang 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 there's a dude setting a mic up by my cab gets straight (laughs) blasted 100% but like uh, I mean your your folks are, are artists types of musicians so may, yeah. they probably laughed at it but like would my mom think any of this is funny I don't know would, yeah, would, my, uh, see my mom would I think Rochelle probably, my wife think any of this is funny I don't know yeah my mom probably loves Food Fighters like she's 
Like she loves fucking Pearl Jam. Loves like she'd get just, the two great Pearl Jam jokes in the yeah, yeah, she yeah. Would, right? Like so she, I like, but would I she get like, those kind of so specific to a group of people, like their yeah. friends? This movie feels like it was made for their friends, right? You know, it's yeah. such a novelty and just so specific to yeah. Well, if it's that. any indicator, I saw this movie twice in the theater. Yeah, and both times. Me and the other person or people were the only people in the theater. Oh, yeah. There's only two other people in the theater wow. with us. Yeah, yeah. And they, I didn't hear them laugh once. I know. I was Because we were laughing a bunch. And then I was like, yeah, I don't hear anybody else. But I mean, there's two people in here. But they, but, but they, we were they loud. I it. mean, we were like, yeah. there's scenes that were so fucking funny to us that we were just like laughing out loud. The Lionel Richie scene <laughs> killed me. Has, <laughs> me and Jeff lost our shit. Lost yeah. our fucking it was amazing. mind. Because like... It's just funny him singing that song, but then when he gets scared by Lionel Richie in the movie, I'm it's like, a one cut, it's a one shot. He's yeah. singing it, it's panning in, yeah. and then a fucking his hand pops in and he screams. <laughs> That's my fucking song. <laughs> I know, and he roasts Dave Grohl so hard. The whole it's fucking hysterical. The last word when he Dying. walks out the, out the hall, he just goes, "Nerd." Yeah, I, I love it. Your own song, nerd. and I was waiting for it because this, this time I knew what was happening. I'm like, "Oh my god." Because first time I'm like, why is Dave singing? Is, yeah. is he just going to do a cover of Hello in here? And then all of a sudden, I loved it though. I was yeah. like, I was, I was so into it. <laughs> the next and time I was just scared. waiting for the scare. I'm like, oh, it's going to be funny. I remember it being really funny the first time. Oh, Fuck. it's good. Great. Is I mean that was like I think if there's like the if I had to pick the, my favorite comedic moment in the movie, it's going to be that one. It's yeah, that or the scare or the you have the, the cool music and you got Lionel oh, Richie as so a cameo. Like good. And I didn't expect didn't expect Lionel Richie at all. It's yeah. So fucking funny. Yeah. They got fucking John Carpenter up in that piece with his, yeah, what? his kid and shit doing dude and like Dave Davies or whatever. They did the yeah. theme at, at the beginning. Yeah, which and then is they dope. appear engineering the Foo Fighters. Which I, see, so this is the thing. Rad. I saw this movie and I, I was like, uh, "You guys got to see it. You, you, you just have act. to see it." Like, I, I, I don't want to <laughs> yeah. tell you all the things that are cool yeah. about it. Like, yeah. there's the gore is over the top. The kills are nuts. There's music's great. More yeah. plentiful. The metal stuff is killer. The score. I mean, the score is great, and the the one big long metal track. No one can fucking act. It's like so hard. Like I want to love it so much more, but like. It's so hard. I, half the time, like, am I laughing at them or with them? I right. don't know. Well, and again, there's no way you can get around it. If you want the band to be in the movie, which you do, they're going to be. Of course, right. you do. Then all of a sudden, you don't have actors in the movie, right? Because this yeah. is the, that, that that rare occasion when people are playing music and they're actually playing music, and they know how to fucking play music and hold the guitar and hold the drumsticks and like right. do the things, but they just don't know how to act, you know. So yeah. like, you have that, that weird trade off. And I think that, like, because Wait, you're mean, not like, expecting them to be Prince great actors. got away with it somehow. Somehow he got all those people to fucking act and sort of deliver lines. He, okay. kinda, he had to make, take acting lessons on well, site. Thank fucking Christ. Yeah. And I, I mean, mean, some of them, like, Bobby Z didn't do so hot in the movie. That's why he only has, like, one scene. But, <laughs> but he still did good. But, like, Wendy did great. Uh, you know, everyone in Purple Rain rules. Espe- even Morris, who didn't, Morris, me, and Morris especially, back. and he skipped all the acting lessons. He hated. He? Yeah, but he fu- he's great. But I would also wager to say that they probably had way longer to make that. Right? Oh, Murray, and more money, way more money, way more time. Right? Like it was an actual motion picture. This, yeah, this feels like a pet, a pet project. Just like a little, like yeah, well, we could, we could probably gather up some money from Rody the studio pay- for to do this. It's like we're already paying for this house to record the album. Like, why not? Make a movie right over here. Yeah. Right? And yeah, they, there's easily find some, uh, some, some funding for it. Maybe not like a huge... Warner Brothers is not going to put this shit up, but like, right. yeah, someone's going to... Doritos, who? maybe? Doritos definitely <laughs> Doritos wanted, wanted, like, wanted a fucking steak in this shit. What? Like, I, for, the, for the first get-go, I was like, that's weird. They're just like showing them Doritos. And then they kept showing them Doritos. And <laughs> yeah. like, pretty soon, like me and Jeff were like, Doritos? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Doritos. Like, Doritos. Doritos, me, faso, lati, Doritos. I think there was also something else. There was... um. There was some Jameson. There was some Paps. Jameson. Yeah. De- Paps was the other one. That yeah, was the one yeah, I was thinking of. Yeah. But, but uh, big, big time Doritos, though. Yeah. I bet Pat is an actual full on Doritos fucking fiend. They made another joke about it. They were like, he's like, I was just over here eating chips. chips yeah. They're like, that's no surprise. <laughs> I know. And it's like just perfectly framed <laughs> that, Doritos out. Yeah. That's just, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and that's it's like, it's like the Wayne's World fucking totally. scene of him. Yeah. I think that if you're a, like a Foo Fighter super fan, and there are millions. Right. I was working at the brewery in like. This is five years ago, and I was pouring beers. It was a Sunday afternoon, and a very beautiful woman came in and sat down. And she had a shirt on and said, my other husband is Taylor Hawkins. What? <laughs> and I was like, whoa, <laughs> that's wild. And I had, rec- I mean, five years before, I would recorded there with uh, the Jealous Sound, who mm-hmm. is a band that, to explain, I'm not just name dropping only, but the technicality, the <laughs> way I got in there <laughs> was there's a band called the Jealous Sound, who some people may know, yep. and they... For the second record, they had Nate Mendel from Foo Fighters play bass on it because he's friends with those guys. Sick. And so he played on all the songs but three. And since I'd known those guys and toured with them before, 
they had me come in and play the three that they, he didn't play, and I Dude, sang a backup song. That's fucking sick. Yeah, man. I did it all yeah, six of six. That's it was amazing. Sick. So um, I was like, "Wow, you're a Foo Fighters fan." Obviously, she's like, "They're my life." Wow. And I was like, "Wow, that's wild." So I talked to her a bit about the Foo Fighters. And she knew every detail about everyone's life. Like, I tried to bring some things up. Like, oh, yeah, there's this. And she goes, oh, is that po- portrait of Dave up in the 606 still? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's still wow. there. Wow. And she knew everything. And I was like, oh, we make a, we make a beer called Fresh Pots that's about that's from the Fresh Pots Dave Girl thing, which you probably have oh, seen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen it. I haven't seen that. You, you haven't seen that, that shit? No. Oh, my God. It's the best. You got to play that for him so now he yeah. knows. Before you cool. look up Fresh Pots Dave Girl <laughs> if you haven't seen it, everybody. Um, but there's a beer. It's a it's a coffee beer called Fresh Pots. And I was like, here. She took a picture with it. She took a picture with me. She's like, this guy played a fucking Nate Mendel's <laughs> fan. I'm like, oh my God, she's a super fan. Wow. And I, I think they ended with her saying, hook me up. Let me go to the studio. Oh. Introduce me to Lou. I was like, <laughs> yo, I, 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 can't, I can't even do that. Pump the brakes. <laughs> but she now, was very sweet. And her shirt said Taylor, right? Taylor. Who's arguably the most freakish looking of the food fighters. <laughs> But I'm he's like also like, the most guy. talented. Oh yeah, no, he's bunch. super talented. But like, I'm yeah. just like that guy's weird looking. He's and crazy like, looking. <laughs> like he's super like, and he's aging into a crazy looking person. Like yeah. the black beard and the blonde hair is a crazy look. <laughs> but um, I think it was him that he just wasn't at all going to try to memorize any of the script. So he just free balled all of it. <laughs> I mean, what difference does it make? It right, d- it does. Right, yeah. yeah. But it's just funny that like that's he's like no, no, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> not having it. Uh, he's like, I got this. Yeah. He was the Morris of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I did love, though, like that scene where he's just. I mean, Dave's all of it like, feels like it's free balled for the most part. I mean, there's two writers apparently on it, but I'm right. like, where? How? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like the scene where we're him where at, the, at the end when he's just like, you know, trying to get him to record, finish the song. Yeah. And he's just like talking about, you're a drummer, I'm a drummer, we get, you know, like that whole <laughs> thing. Like, I was just like, oh my God, this is really fucking funny. Did you guys notice that they died in the reverse order that they joined the band? Right. Yeah, which is really I didn't even think about Except that. Except for Rami, but like they, they said that like he was kind of because he's just a shoe in anyways, but because <laughs> he he died earlier than he because he's the newest band member, so he would right. technically yeah. I do like that they at the very beginning like where's the record at? He's like it's right up here in my head and in there his head and then like at the point Rami not so much this one. <laughs> Again, that feels like such a specific joke to people, right. band people, band yeah. artists. Yeah, and I think I only knew that because so I'm like, funny. who is this guy? Right. I don't, I don't, I don't know anything yeah. about the Foo Fighters. He's a fucking Pauly Shore look like contest winner <laughs> is exactly who that guy is. <laughs> he like was, he was funny. He's he wheezing funny, but the like, juice, man. But the whole he time. is fully he was wheezing. Fully it. wheezing yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. He's wheezing the foof. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys notice their little the little ray gun from their first album? The, yeah, it wasn't so basement, basement, yeah, but it was yeah. very much that was present. for the fans only. Yeah. yeah. Wink, wink. That's cool though. I, I, the fucking rocket raccoon on the wall is gross. And like, yeah, yeah when it came to life at the end was pretty yeah. cool. I yeah. expect that to happen immediately, but yeah, it's funny though. Like, okay, so, you know, skin book. You got, you know, of course, like That's Evil Dead. So like, tropey. And they like the band with the I don't know who was the bald guy. Is he? A, so I, would, you know, I don't know who that was. He looked sort of familiar, but I couldn't. I'm like, I feel like he might that. be in a band also. And I was thinking, who were well, that? I mean, the other people weren't band members because I recognized the one actress from the new Scream movie. Okay, yeah. What's her name? She's like the main girl. Olivia. That she got hammered in the fucking forehead. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Jenna, so she's, Jenna Ortega. Yeah, she's just an actor. And they played like Dream Widow, like as like, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. Like, when they're, when they come back at the end and stuff. All, oh, I question, guys. At any time, did anything actually scare you? The demons with the glowing eyes, I like that shit. Oh, I it love scares that me. It's, it's but did it scare you in this movie? Like I know the thing that could scare you in another movie. When they're coming from Will Forte, yeah, they scared me. <laughs> that was, whenever when they're running around the house, that scared me. Uh-huh. To me, it was very attack the block the way they looked. Uh huh. Yeah. You know, because it's like, easy. It's, it's like, it's, but then they would shine light on it, and there's detail there, unlike right, attack the block. Right, right. Where it's just hair and eyes. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like I thought it was cool. The, I, the scariest moment for me was Lionel Richie. Like that's what I got, that was like my big jump scare for the movie. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of. It's not scary. It's not. I like that it is. They have a ho- lot of horror movie tropes, but it's just it just. And it's King, they they really know? it's it's very much just a comedy. Yeah, when Carrie King came through the second time and he's glowing and he's floating, that scared me. Oh yeah. Because and especially in the end when they had demons going everywhere, I'm like they're gonna they've killed all the members except for Nate and Pat. Yeah. So like they could die in it. There's actual danger. Someone's gonna die. Yeah. Right. See, I thought the movie, because it almost has like a false ending, and I kind of wish it would have just stopped there. Same. You know? it, it, after like the hour mark, like, it just it should end here. This yeah. feels good. And then yeah. it goes on for another like 40 like, minutes. You're like, oh, fuck. I'm like, you, don't, you didn't need to kill off Nate and Pat. And I, I feel like, uh, I mean, their deaths were cool. But I was like, thinking that too. I'm like, bring back the, the manager 
uh, Jeff Garland. I, I didn't like any yeah. of that. I don't like yeah. I don't like yeah. Jeff Garland. I, I feel like they really could have, after they, like, the pool scene if credits. It's just, yep. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Agreed. Very fine. After the puking. Yeah. You, you could just, have, you but could then even, just smash Pat, Pat's head in earlier in the movie and we would have been okay. <laughs> right, right. That shit was awesome. It, yeah. it was totally yeah. awesome. Yeah. Just, just move it sooner. Right, right. Exactly. I mean, I think they had to, you got to kill all the members except Dave or else it's, yeah. Or else it does not fair. At least Dave got kicked in the nuts <laughs> half a dozen times. <laughs> that was awesome, though. Like, I love a fight when two people are just kicking each other in the nuts back and forth. <laughs> that's back that's and very forth. funny, but I just, like, I hated that scene all the <laughs> yeah. same. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah. funny. That idea is funny. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why Jeff Garland got chosen for that. I don't like Jeff Garland. I, me either. I mean, I, I think he's, he's fine. He's just that standard, like, he can just play that guy. That, you got you one note. I'm just there. listening to his spit in his mouth when he talks the whole yeah. time. I hate that I just, just, He's gotten old and gravelly, like, more gravelly than he ever has been. Oh, but, his fucking teeth yeah. blinded me. I couldn't <laughs> see past the fucking <laughs> stinks. The it veneers. Stinks. <laughs> Yeah. If they had just talked about Dream Widow and not shown them, it would have been fine. You didn't have to show the actual people and the yeah. ghosts and the floating. And I'm like, I don't even know what's going on. They didn't on. look but, like a band. That's that's my gripe about that too. Like, no. they showed Dream Widow. Like, they should have chosen just, a band. Those are just some random actors. Yeah, just because they you have, could cherry pick some incredible fucking right actual real life. You could just had Slayer, and I would have been like, cool. You know what I mean? I think like, they have like yeah. a they have a prodigy band they really love that they take on tour with them and shit. That is a woman fronted. Fucking five Fuck person it, rock band. Dude. Why don't you just have them in your band? That would have yeah. such so helped them be a right. band. Yeah, that would have been sick. I mean, to the extent of, I mean, I think that in the big picture, no one's gonna see this fucking movie except <laughs> horror fans and Foo Fighters fans. Yeah, and not even all of those horror fans don't want to see it because they think it's gonna be dumb. Right. Foo Fighters fans don't want to see it because they want to see people get cut in half. Yeah. See, and think, only the super fans are gonna watch it. I think yeah. that like for me now, I like I'll watch it again, and I, I definitely I didn't hate it, and I think that like yeah. I surprisingly liked it a lot more, and I've been thinking about it and laughing about stuff that I was thinking about. Yeah, like, it's so fucking funny. So like, not every joke yeah. lands. No. There's a lot of like really cringy, like ooh. I, that's, <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> dumb, like I mean, that's a, a lot of people's like very very progressive thinking people are like this is a fucking canceled ass movie if you think of it in one way or another like so many hetero dick jokes and blowjob sure. jokes and stuff like that I'm like okay I, I understand yeah, these guys but... are fucking 55 year old men right. at making dumb jokes improvising dumb shit right, right. but then it's... there's a lot of shit that really lands really funny oh like, god there's so many so, more again, jokes again, yeah. a lot of other things the that extremes are... bouncing off each other like one yeah. moment you're like rolling your eyes next moment you're just like holy shit that's hysterical yeah there's more funny things in this than most horror movies, and there's Definitely. more, and it's certainly rock and roll horror movies. There's more cutting edge, gory violence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I like the Foo Fighters in a very passive way. Like, yeah, I like the Foo Fighters just fine. They're just fine. That I've be- never, like I mentioned, I've listened to Color and Shape a couple times <laughs> yeah, all like, the way through. Listen to the songs from it a lot. But yeah, there was a point where I was at a skate shop working because that's how I, I rolled for many, many years, and that album was on full rotation like all the time. Yeah, you know, and like. I want to say maybe when even when I worked at you know in Petaluma that, that thing mm-hmm. was on and on and like and uh, it's background music but it's decent it's good yeah you don't it's hate good it, background you know? music right and like and some of it like it's funny like now like especially like No Hero Everlong they're like songs in movies to like like score things happening that are like you know happy or sad or whatever yeah, and it's like they cultural become, standards yeah they become like setting, okay like yeah. oh like ooh they're playing Everlong this is gonna be a tender moment right now you know like it's like you know what I mean like it's right. funny that their music has done that where like you know because we grew up watching movies that had those songs in it and the, those type of songs in it and then now they're providing that you know yeah, it's right. just funny so you're like okay well like yeah and you can also buy a nirvana t-shirt at kmart now Ex- oh yeah exactly oh, target yeah, absolutely yeah, no problem yeah. yeah which is wild but you know what's funny like this is going to be the most blasphemous thing i've ever said probably on the podcast but nirvana is just fine get out of here <laughs> fire Brian, <laughs> up top fire. baby both of you the, my, I, i'm sorry my own podcast <laughs> <laughs> we're we are of the age you're brian fired. and i where nirvana ain't punk enough sorry they're not a punk band, and they came around in the time where they were the most popular band on earth. They changed the... the I don't think you guys know enough about Nirvana then. The I think you might have been 10 when Nirvana came out. <laughs> Maybe six, actually. Very true. <laughs> Nail on the head. So you can- <laughs> but also, like, for a very popular band, like, they were fucking enormous. They did a lot of very punk shit all, I agree. The, all sure. the fucking I agree. time. I'm saying they, this. They fucking stirred what? shit up Fully the agree. mainstream, my dogs. Fully agree. 100%. I like Nirvana. But at the same time, when I was younger, when it came out, I was 18 years old working in a record store. I was like... No thanks, I'll take the Butthole Surfers. Right. Which okay. is a stupid thing to say. The Butthole Surfers are a terrible band. But, Bad politics, yep. Texas yeah. idiots. Yep. <laughs> but yep. I, that was At my the band. Time. They were the grungiest, weirdest band in the world. At the time they came out, my mom liked them. 
So your guess mom what? seems like the coolest mom in the world. <laughs> it, it is, yeah. it, in in sure. retrospect, it is very awesome. Like because like my mom was into grunge. My right. mom liked grunge. You know, like still does to this day. She fucking jams out to fucking crazy shit. And I'm like, wow, you like that? Cool. And and really like a lot of my music sensibilities are from my mom. I always mm-hmm. used to listen to her records and shit. She always had dope shit. Um, I single handedly got into the Cars because of my mom. And I fucking love the Cars to death. Yeah. But like, Nirvana came out. And what it, I w- I wanted fucking way more punk shit. They were way too mainstream, which is weird to say, but it's true. Like they, people were loving them so much, and like, and my mom was, and I'm just like, it's good, but it's just fine. Like it's just fine. You know, I didn't actually like them when they came out, just because I didn't like guys in just t-shirts fucking getting on stage. I'm like, that that sucks so bad. Like, what do you want like costumes, like Kiss or something? I, I like, love that. Guy. Yeah. I love like a rock star. You know, yeah, like, yeah, like Motley, Motley Crue. I want about my Motley fucking yeah. Trent Reznor. I want people in outfits and like yeah. doing some artsy fartsy Flair. shit. And these yeah. motherfuckers just come, just like fucking some jeans, and like, right. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> That's not cool at all. I, I, I've gotten into them like later, like, of course, like, you couldn't escape it. Like, the songs are fucking good. Like, who doesn't like Teen Spirit or whatever? But, but I only got into more, like, as I got older, and I kind of got over my fucking. I'm on this team and so I can't like this shit. Kind right, of, you know, right. like when totally. you're young, you're like, I, I'm, this is, this is my identity. So I right. can't like anything outside of my little I love it. realm. Yeah. That's interesting. Cause it's like, they're <clears throat> in some way, they're not punk enough and that they were too produced and too mainstream. In other ways they weren't rock and roll enough cause they were too stripped down and like boring. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there's no question that they made great records and they changed the whole idea of what mainstream music was because yeah. I know this for a fact because the fucking assholes I was going to high school with, and I just graduated high school when this shit came out. They were all of a sudden like, yo, man, fucking pumpkins, dude, fucking Pearl Jam. <laughs> like, fuck <laughs> off. You were listening to Bobby Brown beating my ass two years ago. You are a fucking loser. <laughs> right. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, yeah. No, well, I mean, it, like, it, in my high school experience, like, Misfits all of a sudden were like a jock band. Crazy. And that was such a fucking bummer to me. I'm like, what? This is a yeah. punk band. How, yeah. are, how are these fucking fools that are calling me Marilyn Hanson every fucking day? And, <laughs> like, going to be Christ. over here listening to fucking Misfits, where I like, dude, this is not for you? Yeah. This ain't right. for you, bros? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, my high school, which was in Washington, like, during all this shit. But music is for everybody, so it, I just want to put yeah. that out there. No, <laughs> it's my shit. Like it's, yeah, it's hard because exactly. we all came from that play, place where like we we have like very very strict ownership over the types of music we want. Totally, you know, like, and that's what you do when you're younger too. Yeah, that's yeah. just part of the and deal. A part of that is because I mean I'm not gonna sound like Dave Grohl here, but back in the '90s and early early '80s, <laughs> uh, but it, back in those times, if you wanted to hear that music, you had to go spend fucking twelve to fifteen dollars. You had right. to invest yeah. your yep. cash into it. Yep. Well, and, and how much time have we spent? curating the music of our lives and like in in those times when there was no fucking spotify there was no way to hear any of this stuff and you're literally flipping through records or cds being like that looks like it could be i gotta make a choice yeah Yeah. and these i mean these days like i'm when i buy records i'm buying records that i i know nothing about and my personal choice like i just want to be surprised Sure. Give me something that's going to surprise me. Yeah. And so I'll like I'll buy ten records I've never heard of, especially because I'm like, what year? Eighty three. Yes. Mm-hmm. There's <laughs> yeah. a woman in this band. Yes. Not four white dudes. Uh, there's a synthesizer. I'm buying it. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and you know what you like. Yeah. And then seven out of ten times, I'm like, this stinks. Take it back to the record store. But sometimes I'll find a record. I'm like, I can't stop listening to it. What the fuck? Where was this? Where was this right. when you were? Right. Yeah. Right. I'm like, yeah, it's wild. And that's what's so rad about music. But it's also rad that like people can just literally now just like push Spotify, turn it on and hit like random. And they're and like, says, oh, oh fuck, I know what you Nirvana, like. Nirvana, who are these yeah. guys? You like, know what else is great about it, though? Like I can listen to shit I would never dare spend money on. That's what the thing about when you're, when there's you're no fucking, investment. Yeah, because I I, I, yeah, now I can go, oh, that's a little guilty pleasure. I would never buy that, but let me just <laughs> pop that on real quick. Yeah, believe me, there's nothing. I don't think that the old days were better because of that. Like, I think also there's a reason I like some crap records because I, I spent money on this record. Plus, I've been wanting to like this record since I knew it was going to come oh, yeah, out. You're gonna so give it a four chance. months ahead, I was like, I'm going to give it a chance. And, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna and I want to, to like it, so I'm not going to yeah. reject it. Plus, I spent $15 on it. Yeah, <laughs> you're going to at least listen to it a bunch of times before you return it or yeah, whatever exactly. you got to do. Just... I give it a, a fair like shake. Yeah. yeah, of course. I'm like, God, do you think I'd like Diamonds and Pearls if it came out now? No, <laughs> I don't think so. That record might suck. <laughs> Except for that song. Yeah, it's funny. Like, I, through through the years, like I've always tried to get like, okay, like I'll listen to this Nirvana album again, like see what I think now about it, you know? And like, it's just fine. <laughs> and I'm sorry, like I no, know that okay. it's bad, like, and I know that people like, but it's like it doesn't grab me like I want to grab me, and it does sure as hell doesn't grab me like it grabs people. Well, a I, there's a huge, for me, I can only speak for myself, a huge bit of it is nostalgia. 
Of sure, course, that keeps yeah. it exciting for me. Just like, oh, this reminds me of this wonderful time in my life in the early '90s, being a yeah. you know youth and like, discovering music and discovering shit. Like that's that's what makes me think of. So I still just adore it. Yeah. That's I feel that's fully legitimate. That's I a just, great I mean, reason. You guys, you guys definitely have those records too. But, oh, but, well, that's yeah. the thing is that those. For that time, those records are different for me, so that's why exactly. I, I'm yeah, like, you guys are, these records are what I was listening to when right. fucking he was shooting his head off. You know, like it was yep. just like right. this is the different shit that I you know wanted to. In my high school, everybody was fucking punk rock and hardcore. I had all the jocks in our school were fucking Hare Krishna core kids. Like that's what crazy. the fuck? <laughs> what? Yeah, it was the weirdest high school experience ever. <laughs> yeah, but like, do you, I hope, do you, you wish you had simplicity of pedal in my high school, <laughs> where the jocks are like the older guys just fucking had mustaches and were in a bad company and beating your ass after school. Yeah, <laughs> dude, like that sounds. Like, yeah, but, I mean, literally, you go to a party and it's like the Krishna core kids, the punk kids, the hardcore kids. <laughs> The fucking whatever, like everyone is core. Yeah, Every something like core. Yeah, seriously, the straight edge core kids. Like, it was, where are the it fluffies was, when you need them, dude? So, like, yeah, Nirvana was not so in the house. If, if Nirvana is not punk, Foo Fighters ain't shit. Oh no, 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 no. And when that shit dropped, everybody. I mean, like everybody in my circle or whatever. I we were just like, now that's. I mean, that is a poppy. It's a poppy pop band. band. It's a pop band. It, and the thing is, is like I'm a fucking slut for pop. I love pop mm-hmm. shit. So of course I'm gonna like some of those songs, and of course like I'm gonna like that first album, sure. Like, yeah, but these, but these I, are radio friendly. Yeah, jams. and that's I forget who somebody called in and was like, oh yeah, and the, the, they're gonna play the, the safest, gas. the safe. Well, yeah, okay, and they're gonna play the safest uh, rock ever, and then you're all Foo Fighters, and then he's all Foo Fighters. <laughs> or maybe it was somebody else, but yeah, yeah someone <laughs> called in and were like, of course, the safest, yeah. most mainstream, popular, like safe. Put this, everyone's gonna like this. Yeah, shit. The ROC. Yeah. Of rock, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling dude, it's better than what I uh, fucking... Uh, 2006, I remember I was uh, overseas and this Australian girl put on a fucking... She's like, who doesn't like Jack Johnson? I'm like, oh, oh. God. Yeah, that's Throw the fucking Foo Fighters on, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jack Johnson makes Foo Fighters look like fucking like Motorhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, but like that, that, sh- that Dream Widow shit is insane. Like, if you didn't know that was Foo Fighters... You'd be like, this shit's fucking hard. I mean, yeah, Dave know? Grohl is in the fucking dope shit. Yeah. And he has, Dude, he has a chop. Dude, he's, he's in yeah, Probot, exactly. Probot is, an, is a fucking metal record through and For through. Sure. And it was just like Dave Grohl's solo project. Where he's like, I want to get all of my metal heroes on to sing and write a song with me. And each one, is, there's, a, there's a fucking Lemmy one. There's Corrosion Rad. Conformity. There's a dude yeah. from Voivod. There's... Everyone is just like all his group. heroes. Yeah. Like, come on. Celtic Frost dude totally. is in there. Every, like, everyone is a separate wow. one of his heroes on it. And it's fucking badass. Yeah. I got that vinyl too from the same spot. Oh shit. (laughs) Stole it from this dude. I mean, the thing about him is like, it is rather like, you know, like, it's not like he's just like, I like these things. You guys make a music, make a song for me and then I'm going to listen to it. You know, like he's, he's an amazing musician who's obviously multi-talented, can play everything, Mm -hmm. can, can write, sing, can do everything. Killer voice. So yeah. Oh yeah. Like, like I said, I was listening to Foo Fighters right after we went and saw that movie and I was like, damn, he's got a fucking sweet box, (laughs) you know? (laughs) (laughs) You know, like, yeah. And you know, they wrote those fucking heavy jams. Like, right. Yeah. They totally fucking did that. I wish that, I mean, I'm glad, I wish it would just said Foo Fighters on it, but they couldn't do that to the fucking, the (laughs) literally millions of moms. My mom would be like, I'm trying to hear the new David Grohl. Oh. I'm sorry, mom. If you listen to this, that's not how you sound. You sound sweet. You have a sweet little voice. But yeah, this is this is gonna like literally like tear the wigs off of moms everywhere. You know, like. But that's it's rather like they can do that, and it sound. It's not like somebody doing it, and it's like, oh god, like did you hear that? David Grohl made a fucking metal album. Like fuck. No, god. he's he's got roots in metal and punk. So yeah, he can, yeah. He can pull it out whenever he wants. You know. Yeah, I love in, in like. I'm I'm there for it. Like I'm 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 so there for it, and it's rad to hear. Like okay, cool. Like they want to do this or whatever. I celebrate that they are dope musicians, and I like. I think this movie is dope. I yeah. think it's worth a watch. I, I for like sure. I like that they can just have any kind of ridiculous idea and just fucking do it. Sure. Just make it happen. That's the thing about this movie that I like, really enjoyed. This is one of those things we would just joke about, like when you yeah. make a record, like oh, it'd be funny if we did this thing. They just went ahead and did it. Isn't it fun to see a movie that just looks like a bunch of people having fun making a movie? Yes, that's exactly. It and feels like yeah. my high school buddies on right. a weekend just. In the backyard filming a movie. If they had millions of dollars. But then they, get but the, they, but then they could pipe in budget. the scares to back it up. Like yeah, the, yeah. I mean, that's certainly not 
at no point did you feel actual fear because you watch horror movies all the time. Yeah. But my stepfather felt actual fear. I was going to ask you. Yes. Yeah. Did they get when they were out. pulling Dave's guts out? Because my dad hasn't seen fucking Dawn of the Dead or he hasn't seen you know those movies uh-huh. when they're ripping Dave's guts out. The demons and shit are climbing yeah. all over the bed. He was fucking f- cringing. It, really? It, yeah. It's weird to think about wow. that because we're so desensitized. Like we've seen that gag in probably at least four different movies, if not more. Yes. Right. Right. Not to mention every other Walking Dead episode. So like, right. It, that's just fucking old hat. And like whatever. Like I've seen guts. You know. Yeah, I've seen but guts like, being pulled out but, before. Yeah. But okay. like, I, see, yeah. I see what you're doing. But like, yeah. But if like if I put that in front of my mom or or my kid or something like that, shit's dude. There's a fucking nightmares happening. You dude. Know? Not to mention the head with the symbol and the chainsaw in half. Yeah. And the, even yeah. the wire going into fucking Nate's eye. That one got me. Just because, yeah. like, again, it's the eye thing. You're just like, yeah. oh, like yeah. that fucking. I don't know how many times a string is broke right near my eye. <laughs> oh, right, dude. Yeah, uh, yeah. that sh- that that montage of Dave trying to just like write music and like everything's going wrong and him just like getting like, and like, the string breaks, the like string breaks. Like, <laughs> just like, yeah. Ah! <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a lot of really funny, <laughs> stupid things in there. If you're if you're a Dave fan, you're gonna love it because oh, there's really? just like just him just fucking around. When it kind of made me a Dave fan. Yeah, more than I was, you know, like. I really enjoyed it, and I saw it twice. And I, the second time, I was like, I had Jules with me, and she's a huge Dave fan too. And she's from she's, she's, she's your age, so she grew up mm-hmm. as a person wanting to play drums oh, yeah, into of that course. band. How could yeah. you not? So she's like, I was conscious. I was like, is this funny for her? Is this gonna? Is this enjoyable? Yeah. I'm like, what do I care? She loves this fucking guy <laughs> already. She's already invested her whole life into loving this guy. Right. And she liked it. She liked it. Yeah. yeah. She's like, I don't get it. I don't know why, but still, I liked it. it was, she doesn't <laughs> like horror movies at all. Right. So, but it was. I think it was I, legit. I wonder what, what, what the actual uh, band dynamic is in, in real life. Like, are they playing a hyper version of themselves? Or, like, I, I was kind of curious about that the whole movie watching it. Because sure. Dave is playing a, a fucking really dickish version of himself. I'm like, is he actually a dick? Or is he probably pretty fucking nice? But he's, he is probably pretty nice. But he probably also has to be that, like, he's 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 Mr. Foo Fighter. Right, like in for the, sure. The, yeah, I mean, the so first like, record is all him. Right. So, like, so, and then, like, as as people are coming on, but like, they all are obviously contributing tons of shit to the the band. But like, I have to think that he's the captain. Oh, sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. He's, I just, but I just, I just wonder, like, is that is that one guy who's waving the feather around? Is he actually kind of a hippie in real life? Like, sure. Like, and then they like playing that up, and yeah. he's like a sex maniac, or, or they, is it just like a funny thing that they just? Well, he's like of? the young guy who's probably not married, so he gets all the dudes. right. He gets yeah. He's back. He backstage <laughs> getting hum dogs and then fucking yeah. yeah. I just, I, I, yeah, I just curious about that because I, mean, I, I don't know. I was felt weird about Dave being such an asshole throughout the room. Like, yeah, I know he's playing a character, but like, is he? He's like, probably not. He's probably just the sweetest. I mean, judging by the, just his band lineup, because he. Pat left and he brought in a new guitar player. Right. And then for some reason, Pat came back, which is great, but he didn't kick out the old guitar player. That's awesome. And he just kept that dude in. Right. Yeah. Which is great. And I'm like, I really like that. And then, yeah, then they added a keyboard player who could have just been a guy they just hired for the road, but he's like made him well, an official was. member of the band. But now he's an official member and he's in everything. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And they they, kept, him, the they kept him around. Yeah. yeah. And he's in the fucking movie now. Like, sure. that's, I think that's super fucking cool. Yeah. And, and when you think about it, it's funny, like, dudes like that too, like, like a keyboard player in like a hard rock band. Kind of gets lost, like yeah. to be honest. A it's, three it, guitar hard rock band, right? It, it's yeah. kind of, it's definitely kind yeah. of. A, and they have them playing a mellotron, which is like the most right. delicate of instruments. <laughs> the fucking That's what thing. I'm I don't know if you know about the instrument. It's an amazing sound of the instrument, but it's got s- loops of tape that make the noise. And so they're, they're very rare instruments because you got to play it, and it runs a loop of tape over a fucking right. head. What? Every string is another loop of tape. No way. It's ridiculous. So that's the, the, he's got that little delicate instrument behind three guitars yeah. in a stadium band. I'm like, hearing that shit at all. <laughs> even fully cranked, that shit's lost, right? Right. right. But like, they must like him, and and you know, he, sure on recorded stuff, he's gonna lend something to it. But like, yeah. he's getting lost in there. But it's cool, like that he's in there. Yeah. But, but right before, but he could have just kept the band a four piece because that was initially kind of what it was, or right? A three piece, I guess initially. But yeah, but he, no, I, I like that he made everyone like an official member and kept people on instead of kicking anyone yeah. out, which you don't see a lot in. I mean, I, so many of my favorite bands, so many members have come and gone, and now they just like don't even yeah. bother like saying they're official members. Dude, even you know? Voyage of the Rock Aliens, they, t- <laughs> they, had, they had, and I'm saying this because they had actual bands in the movie. One of the bands who's like a synth band, they're like, well, that guy can't act, that guy can't act, you're out. We're getting actors in to play in Voyage of the Rock Aliens. Like, <laughs> yeah, never what? came out in the USA. Wow. Yeah, calm down. Yeah. Yeah. Calm you're down. overthinking this, dummy. Yeah. It doesn't have to be an actor to make this movie work. Yeah. I'd ra- again, like, if it's a movie about people playing music, I'd rather see them playing the music right rather than 
a per, like we've seen recently where there's like a kid who doesn't even know how to hold a guitar. Yeah. You know, like that, that's, that's more obvious to me than maybe someone who's not so great at acting, you know, like, mm -hmm. or at least it's forgivable because they're, you're like, really, they're a mus musician first and then an it's, actor. It's tricky. Never. Our friend, well, yeah. They, so in, in this place, they have their rock guys who can't not look like they know how to rock, except maybe Nate. <laughs> but, oh, dude, <laughs> seriously, what's up with that dude? I've always thought that. I've I love always him. thought he, uh, he's a he's great bass player. So but, good in but man, everything he's he in. He holds his instrument in such a dumb way. He looks so goofy. <laughs> And I don't, I don't know. It just always bugs the fuck out. I mean, I noticed at the end he was like trying to be scared and he would just like have this weird stance, stance that just looks so bizarre. I'm like, what is, is that supposed to be scared? What is this? He's just stance? a nerdy guy. Yeah, he's, he's just nerd. a weird dude. Yeah. He's like, you just don't know how to hold your he's, body. He's the core member of the biggest rock band in planet earth. And he's just a goof. I, I, I get, that's, I think that's something I like about Dave Grohl. I mean, like he, he, yeah, he's one, he's Dave Grohl. He's starting his own fucking band after Nirvana and he picks just people that he likes that are good musicians. Yeah. Like, they don't have to look cool. They don't have to be cool in any kind of way. Because this guy's going to be not. Nate is like, a, but he seems like I'm a, sure cool, a nice, just, you got to cool be guy. cool to work with, and you got to yeah. be. Yeah. But like, but like, as far as like, I'm a rock and roll right. Well, guy. He, does, he, he is not that. He ain't like, Nicky Six. He ain't, that exactly. Yeah. He ain't fucking Nicky Six. He's just probably a fucking cool dude. Yeah. yeah. But that's why it's funny. Like when you look at like Pat, which I like. I think I, I kind of respect that now. Like when sure. I was a kid, I was like, I want, I want Nicky Six. I want the flash. You want and the hair. Fucking, you want bracelets. The sex appeal. All that fucking crazy shit. But. I, yeah, I, in my older age, I'm like, yeah, just pick the best <laughs> musician for it. Right, and the, right. the guy that will get along with everybody and, and just, will be a, a funner person to be with yeah, all the time, right? It exactly. quite obviously yeah. does not affect the success of your band, whether you have Nikki Six or Nate Mendel. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, like, it's just funny, like, seeing, like, Pat, like, who comes from this crazy punk pedigree to this insanely, like, he's been in other bands, too, obviously, yeah. but, like, but he's just wearing, like, these funny little, like, velour, like, sweatsuits. Like yeah. all that stuff, where it's just I'm like, that is not rock and roll, but whatever, it looks comfortable. Yeah, but you he know? wears like, a nightgown and a cap when he goes <laughs> to sleep on the floor. Is funny. hilarious. I'm like, why is that dude? The oldest guy is sleeping on the kitchen counter because he's like, like that's it, funny. It's just a comfortable spot, and plus snacks. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're dumb. But I love like she walks in, there's just legs sticking out, and it looks like blood, and it's just a blown out ketchup bottle, and he's got the nightgown on so that you could just see only the legs. The legs like, yeah. And he just sits up like, who? What? <laughs> And you, they, why don't you go ahead and watch yeah. fucking Decline of Western Civilization one time and watch Pat Smear sit around and talk about how he beats women up. Oh, gee. But this is the, it was late 70s, yeah. early 80s, so, yeah. I mean, that was just a punk thing to say. Right. Aye, aye, aye. Jesus and Christ. compared to Darby Crash, you are the mellow guy in the fucking germs. Dude, I was, like, looking at photos yeah. of him young, and it's like, whoa, dude. Like, I tr like, you would never think it's the same dude, you know? Right. Like, it's, it's fucking wild, but he's just goof. I, I, yeah. And I, I think I like it. I like him. But it, but it's hard to like it. Yeah, it's I hard mean, to like his acting. God <laughs> damn, that was rough. Well, that's I, that's what I'm factoring in is like that goofiness because like I don't I think he's probably really a goof. I think all their acting might have been on par with all of fucking Thor's bandmates acting. No, no, that's it's not thing, it's like better. Certainly, certainly. <laughs> listeners, like if you're looking for a fucking like numero uno November pick. Start it with is, Studio 666. Yeah. Yeah. Studio 666 is, is the one. About the best there's, you're going to get. There's another Studio 666 came out in 2005. I know. I feel like we should have watched that too. <laughs> Maybe we will. Weird. Maybe for November. So, okay. Yeah. So I, I did want to ask this. So like that house, they did record the 10th album in that particular house that we watched. Yeah. But that isn't the studio. That isn't the studio. You, you studio six. No, the studio is in Northridge, and it's a completely different studio. Six oh okay. six. I thought you were talking about this house. Yeah, like, you went to no. this house. Didn't, I've never been to the house. Okay. The house this but is you more of like a studio six. It's a warehouse space, Got and it. it's it's a. Uh, so it is like out. a studio studio. It's not. It's a real legit studio. Huge drum room. It sounds amazing. Cool. Because we were trying to figure that out. We were like, is this where Josh has been? Because it doesn't no. look like a studio. You know. No, they like, don't even. I mean, Studio six oh six is Dave's personal studio and Foo Fighters rehearsal space. It, it, it's, it's like took the board from Sound City, right? Yeah. So when I was there in 2009, I remember I was finishing up my vocals there for this Jello Sound record that came out. And Lou, John Lusteau, who's the house engineer there, was getting this call. He's like, oh shit, Dave just got the Sound City board. And we're like, what does that mean? He's like, oh, he, just had, he, he it was an auction. He bought this board that Fleetwood Mac did rumors on. Dude, almost Holy all the shit. best yeah. fucking records are right. recorded on this board. So it's a Neve board, which is like a... And I think he might still be around. If he's not, he was like the top of the line console, like preamp maker for boards. And the boards, and so they took the whole thing apart, reassembled it at Studio 606, made a documentary about it and all that shit. Whoa. Check it out. Okay. It's, called yeah. it's called Sound City, right? I think something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think that. it's called Sound City. Okay. And it's it's about, great, though. It's great, It's though. about the Sound City 
board and all the people that were on it. And then Dave does a similar thing he did with Sonic Highways where he gets people in, Murray, shut the fuck up. <laughs> we'll bring in like Stevie Nicks and then do a song with Stevie Nicks and then on the on board. The board. And wow. so, but when I was just there in November, we were doing shit with the board and John, and Lou was there, the house engineer, he was helping us. And we're just doing drums because the room is insane. We wanted the place in LA where Casey lives to do drums. Yeah. And you can't rent the fucking studio. You can't just be like, hello, I'd like to book time at 606. They're <laughs> right. like, goodbye. <laughs> you have to either be a major label with an in or you have to be friends and family because I qualified as the most peripheral of right. friends yeah. and family. Because yeah. I was in there once before. I yeah. was able uh-huh. to call some people, that into. get John's number, call John, wait for a while eventually bug John Moore and he's like, Oh yeah, I'll get you in there. No problem. Good wow. for you, man, for yeah. fucking yeah. going I for it. Push a little bit. But at the same time, it was when I was back there, it's just so smooth and easy. Yeah. It's just such a beautiful studio. And I'm but when he was fucking shit, with that why. Neve board and sl- doing this he's like twist of knobs, it's like crackle, 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 crackle. He has to do it every single time. There's like fuzz and crackling because it's an old fucking board yeah, wow. filled with old electronics. But it has such a character to it. It's like so yeah. such a specific sound. And when you look at like people like I watch a lot of Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis like documentary stuff from the eighties and nineties, the board is what makes their sound. It wasn't there's no interface. Like there was no computer screen, of uh. course. Not to sound like Dave Grohl on any documentary you've ever about to see, <laughs> but this was before the internet. <laughs> So <laughs> there's like on, like the sliders and the amps and the the uh, personality of those electronics is what makes your sound. It goes straight from there to some maybe some offboard like reverbs and shit onto tape. Wow. The end, wow. right? So it's mm-hmm. like that is your interface. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you get that board and you're in the fucking money. Mm-hmm. And these legendary boards float around all the time. I know that Babyface's original board, the producer and yeah. musician Babyface, ended up at fucking in Fort Collins, Colorado, where the Descendants have their studio, Blasting Room. So they're all on Babyface's board. No way. Wow. Uh, wow. Fucking Jesse Johnson bought Prince's board course, from him at the, at the, what do you call it, Chan Hassan spot, his original studio. These boards, when they float around, they're legendary. And this so one cool, is... The, it's like they have these weird, like they have their own souls you know like, like the like, fucking that's a weird thing about like it, yeah. the studio 606 that's yeah, kind of the exactly. point like that yeah. probably isn't residually in their mind like this board comes with its own yeah fucking sauce wow yeah yeah totally that's Dude, so, that's look so up cool. sound like the best records were made at the spot with that board it's fucking nuts. sound city sound said? city yeah. the sound city board yeah. and then they did like a like right after that another like the fucking muscle shoals movie came out and that's like the wackest music that was done there it's like oh yeah. okay james okay. taylor suck a fat yeah one. not every not everything that came in there was <laughs> but the sound bomb. city of course yeah. but sound city was like was it was la la yeah, yeah. it's an la studio or la area i don't know i always think sunset, LA sunset sound is where prince always spent all his time in la uh-huh. but sound city was like the legit a ridge Classic rock, Fle- Fleetwood Mac. Yeah, but I mean, I think I think Molly Crew I think recorded the record there. Oh, cool. I think I mean that, that amazing Queens of Stone Age record was recorded there. Right, the Songs for the Deaf. Like what else is my favorite Marilyn Manson record? Wow. Can't Play Animals was recorded there. Right, like all kinds of good fucking shit. Crazy. Some Nine Inch Nails was recorded there with Teeth. That record is fucking sick, which has Dave Grohl on it, so it makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah. I like this movie. I liked. I've seen it twice yeah. now. I really liked it. I, and I'm not I a huge like Foo Fighters fan. Yeah. I like the inside jokes, even though I know. That they don't land with it. They're not going to land with yeah. 90% I like, of people. I th- I'm liking it more and more as a, I'm sitting with it. Because I don't know what I expected going in. I, there's a lot that I didn't like about it. It didn't work for me. But then the things that did work are just like really sitting well with me. And I'm just yeah. like, I, I think I really like this movie. I thought I thought it was this, I was going to hate it. I was like, man, this these guys are trying to make a serious horror movie. And it's going to suck so much and far it, from serious yeah far, like far, they far. save themselves by not making yeah and i think yeah. that's that's yeah. like to lean into like okay like we're not going to be able to do this seriously at all you guys suck at acting like we're not going to be able to do this let's make it funny let's be goofy which, i think that's just part, I guess of, is part of the funniness is that it's not good yeah part right. of their personalities yeah. too is that they're they don't take themselves too seriously yeah right, right. yeah as you've seen in any of their music videos you know they're all pretty silly half I the need time to watch them yeah. i don't think i really watch much uh, foo fighters you never see the one where they're like doing the Mentos commercials and all, the, I, yeah, all that kind of silly one, like, shit. I mean, yeah, like, they've been, they've been funny people yeah. forever. Yeah. Everlong video is one of those, it's a Michelle Gondry video, so it's like oh, yeah. funny, but it's also super serious and cool. Mm-hmm. They do really cool shit a lot of the time. Yeah. But they also fucking make real bogus music a lot of the time. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you figure like, yeah, I'm a 10 track album. So There's like two good songs. Yeah, they're doing yeah, like 15 you know? tracks an album and they do 10 albums. That's so I guess, I guess this movie makes sense because it's like, both good and bad, which is like Foo Fighters. Yeah, it is. It really like, is. That's, really that's good spectrum. and really bad. Uh, yeah, it's the fucking spectrum. Wow. Yeah. 
I definitely think it's worth a watch. I think if you are a music nerd, a horror nerd, a Dave Grohl nerd, like just like watch it with your friends. Like put it on with your friends and have yeah. a fucking laugh. It's yeah. it's good. If, especially if you like fuck it, if you're in a band, dude, put it on. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of really funny band banter. Oh yeah. I mean it's it's if you want to see a funny rock horror movie, th- this is the funniest and the rockest of the horror movies. <laughs> how, do you, how do you think Whitney Cummings came about? I thought I was like I was kind of trying to search after her. I thought maybe she is dating somebody in the band or something, or maybe uh, she I think the same, friends mean, with same reason that Will Forte worked out. They're like, who's fucking funny? Yeah. Who's available? We have we have cast characters like the delivery guy. You got to have more bodies to fucking end up right. But like Whitney is really funny, and I don't really think she got to like stretch those legs, you know. Like she didn't really because well, they didn't like, write a really funny part. It's true, but they, she had some funny stuff. She did. She, the, the, but I'm like, if I'm bringing yeah. in Whitney Cummings, I'm going to be like, let's sit down with Whitney Cummings and like write your shit yeah. with her. Well, I think the it's problem like with Will Forte just improved his lines, isn't it? Dude, I think he, the problem with Jeff Garland is that he was trying to be funny, and he's just says, not right. fucking. Yeah. I mean, exactly. It, exactly. It, I think if Whitney tried harder, it wouldn't have been as the funny parts wouldn't have come off as funny, and she sure. wouldn't have been as adorable. Yeah, I love her. She's great. And like Will Forte, can, you can just look at him and it's funny. He could say yeah. anything. He just has yeah. a funny voice. Yeah. I wish his part was bigger. <laughs> yeah. 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 Really. Yeah. I love that he's trying to like pawn off his demo and shit. Like oh, that's yeah. whole, like, and like so relevant. Like so like imagine a delivery dude pull like dropping off food to Dave Grohl and be like, and he, he had a band. Like uh, why wouldn't you automatically think I, that Again, these are it? the jokes that are like, it's so specific to it you. It is. And like, like the joke about like you're my second favorite band. I'm like, yeah. how many Cold times Blade. have you must have heard that shit? <laughs> <laughs> that must be like so Happy funny. To, it must be so funny to his band and like yeah. his group of friends. You know, like <laughs> right, those right. kind of comments. Yeah, totally. But it's 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 funny. But like, yeah, you know, his his buddies are dying here in that line for the sure. Coldplay, yeah, the fucking Coldplay. <laughs> Fuck, dude. It's so it's a, I, I think it's a lot of fun. I don't think it's the best movie ever, but like in the realm of rock and roll, horror, comedy, shit, it's, <laughs> it's probably a very small, it's a very realm. Very small realm. In that it's tiny little room, bad. this is this one is on the top of the pile. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. yeah. I'm just remembering Will Forte's band. It's called Bone Structure. <laughs> <laughs> and their CD and that cover is so cover. sick. That cover. I know, oh dude. God. Uh, how many people have died and be like, we have to finish the record for yeah. them. We gotta do it for him. <laughs> The fucking delivery guy. Or he died for nothing. Yeah. He died for our band. Give me so your cell dumb. phones. Give me the keys of the van. So <laughs> dumb. I like crushes Taylor's cell phone. He's like, hey, no cops, crunch. <laughs> it's iPhone. So stupid. It's so dumb. Yeah. No, but, it, but funny. Very funny. It's, fun, it's funny. And yeah, it is for, for those six of you listening that have bands and like horror movies. <laughs> Woo. It was fucking, I, I, I really liked it. Yeah. I mean, I watch it again. I'll watch it. I'll watch in, it again. I'll watch it in November. I do. Right. I do remember like being like, oh, I, oh, this movie is fun at the pool, and being like, oh, it's done, and then it wasn't done, and I was like, ah, for that extra chunk, I definitely was like, mm. it went. Like, oh, dude, you know, can we have a director's cut that's shorter than the right. theatrical? More like overlong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Zing. <laughs> but I think yeah, but that's everyone's review. Every professional reviewer said it more like overlong. Yeah. I bet. Um, <laughs> if they put out a fucking Blu-ray and it's got extra shit. This dude's buying it. Yeah. For sure. That's going up next to the Tenacious it's D. Be right DVDs. up next to <laughs> Tenacious D, right next to fucking Breaking and Breaking 2. Oh, yeah. Right next to Eddie yeah, and the yeah, Cruisers. Yeah, yeah, very specific. You don't have a lot, but you DVDs. got the goods. Yeah, don't look too hard. Is that, is that City of God over there? Yeah, City Damn, of God. I need to borrow that from you. Bachelor Party, right yes. next. We have Bachelor Party's right next to the Brown Bunny in Buffalo 66. <laughs> <laughs> if that doesn't sum up Josh. Yeah. That's true. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome. funny. But thanks for picking yeah, it. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I'm glad. Thanks for yeah. going with I, it. I, I, was, I, I was You guys were bummed. I knew you were so bummed. We were, we were both dragging our feet just walking to the theater so hard. Like, <laughs> like Josh oh. is making us spend $25. <laughs> this is going to suck. And we got to see the trailer for X. Pretty I've already I've been watching the trailer for X. Very Dude, excited. that's fucking Kid Cudi. Yeah. Very excited. I had no Dude, idea. That movie, you know, it is Texas Chainsaw. It looks fucking with dope. a porno with wieners. I love it. I'm, and with, I'm in. And your killer is a fucking little old lady for yeah. you, Bri. Yeah, dude. And my, my, my <laughs> buddy, lady. my buddy that works with Chelsea Wolf doing the music. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Oh, with Tyler right. Bates, Tyler Bates, Chelsea Wolf, and no Ben. Shit. Yep. That movie is gonna fucking rock. I already gonna know it's gonna be good. And like, it just it's oh I can't. Ty West, who I'm a fan yeah. of. I'm like I'm excited to see him do something really cool again. It looks like it's going cool places, but dude. Like, I'm fucking pumped about that movie. Just from the trailer, is a better. 
Texas Chainsaw movie, then the remake that just came Then out. everyone's Easy. three. Yeah. yeah. Right? Easy. And, and then some old people, you're going to be frightened. Oh, you're going to be scared. Old people. And you know they're just lingering. They're just hanging out and touching people. And they can probably. There's some old flappy stuff. titties some, out and everything. Oh, there's definitely some flappy titties in that movie. <laughs> If someone doesn't get crushed by a flap, you titty, like just smacked in the face and their head explodes, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> no, I can't wait. That, we're definitely re- reviewing that because we have to. I mean, horror and prawn? Come on. Come on. We, I mean, we already like? watched porno. <laughs> <laughs> the movie. Not the, just the porno, movie. the thing. <laughs> Marie, you're like right in my like, dick, and it's making me so nervous. You're just gonna chomp. I know. He wants to. He wants you to squeeze his face. It, it got like I'm squeezing his face, right but right on my just fucking don't, taint. Don't chomp down. He's never chomped a ball. <laughs> I know. You're, I know you're a bit of yeah. a nipper. Uh, there's there's always a, nip people. <laughs> he's, for, he's gonna develop a taste for the nards. <laughs> for nard the, hound. Human nards. <laughs> human nards. <laughs> I can smell your nards. <laughs> <laughs> your nards in my snack. <laughs> Murray, no more. Eat my nards. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever go see that store in the Midwest called Menards? M E N A R D S. I've heard of it before. I've never been. Come in to it, Menards. But like, because my, my buddy's last name is Menard, so like, I, like it's always just a, a joke. But visit Menards. <laughs> Hurry to Menards. <laughs> Beat feet to Menards. <laughs> Murray, come here. To Menards. <laughs> Right. Not Jeff's Nards. Should right. we do a voicemail? Let's I would do love a to. Yeah. All right. What do we got? Hey guys, I'm just watching your Gorman episode, and I had the most brilliant idea for some new merch for you guys. You know how you were saying that no one would ever buy your farts in a jar? <laughs> Hear me out. An enamel pin, FM farts. Just put it out there. <laughs> I think it'd be pretty great. You guys could make some cash off of it. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. So is she proposing a, a pin of farts in a jar that says Forever Midnight on it? Or FM? Wow. Or it's FM farts. Is this the pin? There's letters on a pin. Is that what it is? I don't know. I think a jar. I think, yeah. With, a, with like a, with a. You could do a clear. Glow in the dark smoke. Oh, yeah. Right? You yeah. can do a clear. A clear, yeah. like a, yeah, the clear jar. I've seen people do like a crystal like, balls and things like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you could do a version of that. With, but yeah. yeah. We have here, some kind of. Here, check this out. Green thing in a jar. <laughs> in the same way yeah. that Kiss okay. put a little bit of their own blood into the comic they made yeah. in the 70s. We Ooh. all traveled to Beijing and <laughs> squeeze a little. We, just, we travel to Beijing and do a little fiart into the ink. <laughs> you have a download. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could download a fart with a pin. I, but yeah, send them a fucking SD card. Or a, a special, <laughs> like just a, it's a one MP3 file that's three seconds long. <laughs> I got four gigs of farts for you. <laughs> Choose to uh, your best one. <laughs> oh, dude. I like an idea, though, of like a, like a 3D like fart in a jar pin. That's kind of funny. <laughs> Who would buy that? I, but I, well, I wouldn't want to do Forever Midnight. I want to do like Jason Voorhees. A Jason Voorhees fart? Yeah, fart in a jar or something. Or like I a, mean... And have it smell. We'll have like a... a yeah, a scratch and sniff. Yeah. Hook up. Yeah, we'll have to talk to Scott, who did our uh, fucking Night Drive 7 Inches, talking about the scratch and sniff technology. Yeah, we, yeah. I think it's just you put stinky stuff on paper. You just rub it. Just I got rub it. stinky stuff. Yeah. Rub it on your... <laughs> yeah. Hot stamp Hot a fucking little piece of pepper. I mean, how are you going to hit this right spot with your stamp? You just hit all the spots. <laughs> just, just hit it. <laughs> just use the all. whole trunk. The whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 uh, I, you know, I know that we'll at least sell one to this... Lovely person that called. So. All right. Put an order for one enamel pin, please. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Should we do one more? Yeah, Let's please. Let's do another one. Guess who? Uh, as far as zombies go, the green ones, I would go full Captain Kirk on their asses. Guaranteed. Y'all have a good one now, you hear? <laughs> Dude, the honk honk. Oh my oh, god. Teddy bear. Thank you. A trucker on the road. I Man. didn't quite get exactly what he said there. Do you? He said, as far as zombies go, the green ones, because I think we were ah. talking about Guru Bleen. Oh, green, green or blue. Green or blue. Blue or green? green. I see. Green I get it blues. now. Because Captain Kirk Captain sleeps Captain. with the green women's. Ah. Uh-huh. Teddy bear, do not well, cause we were have talking sex about, with a zombie. We, yeah, we were talking a lot about having sex with zombies. So now, you, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yep. there you go. Got it. Only a teddy bear. Would consider <laughs> which one am I gonna fuck? Well, he's on the road. He's got a lot of time to think. Yeah. You know, he's put, putting pieces together. Yeah, yeah. He's doing the hard thinking he, for the rest of us. He sure is. Bless him. 
Thank you, Teddy Bear. Teddy Bear. Much love. Teddy Bear. Yo, this is the devil. That's right. That devil. Yo, what's your favorite horror movie? No, fuck that. What's my favorite horror movie? <laughs> guess. Right now, I want you to guess. What's my favorite horror movie? Guess right now. Yo, oh. shut the fuck up. <laughs> this is the devil. <laughs> Yo, just kidding. My favorite horror movie is Castle Freak. Oh. You know why? Ever since I've seen that movie down here in hell, all I do is I just put a sheet on me and I just pretend to be furniture all day, every day. <laughs> and then when people try to sit on me, boom, it's the fucking devil. <laughs> That's all hell is, y'all. It's just people trying to get comfortable. But turns out, it's just me. It's just the devil. <laughs> wow. What better way to end the Studio 666 episode than with the, the devil calling, calling in? Of course, the actual of devil called to ask us what our favorite horror movie is. <laughs> no, what his favorite horror movie is. I was going to say Event Horizon, but it turns out it was Castle, Castle Freak. Freak all along. I see, I'd always go Exorcist for the devil. You'd think. Yeah, I feel like that's just like the st- like he has to. Mm. It turns out that it doesn't have to be I know, about, about him. him. About, but, yeah. You would think he's but so would, full of himself, yeah, the, the devil. Exactly. He's so devil. omnipresent throughout all of culture, dimension, space yeah. time, all that kind of stuff. He just wants to be a freak in the castle cellar right. with a sheet on, no penis. Being a chair. Just pretending like he's a chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's scaring you. you Don't know? we all? Yeah. Don't we all? He's, he's tired of the slow burn, uh, subtle scare. You know what? Speaking of like rock and roll and all that stuff, have we talked about that Lars Ulrich toilet? Do you guys see that? No. Yeah, yo, I've seen that you shit. See that? It's a There's flush like a, colored, looks like his, his nutsack is the toilet. No, no, it's a full body, it's Lars <laughs> as a toilet that's a sculpture. Right. That's what I'm talking about. Someone yeah. trying to poop into Lars? It, yeah, it looks like his nutsack is just wide. That's the bowl of the fucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he's wearing a t shirt, but he's Donald Duck in it. <laughs> It's fucking disturbing. <laughs> does it look like Lars? No. Does it look like no. a bad yeah, sculpture? Yeah, it kind of, it kind of does. <laughs> does. It does not look like <laughs> Lars. I know oh. it's supposed to be him, but it looks, it looks like shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, my God. But what is how, this? That's how I picture if I was pretending to be furniture, what I'd look like. Josh, you need that for your, uh, your toilets across the world. Toilets of the world. <laughs> I think... The rock and roll room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the, the special like art exhibit version. I don't like the legs at all. <laughs> The legs are very you, wrong. You don't want to squeeze those knees while you're taking a shit? <laughs> yeah. I feel like I want to go reverse bowl style. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know that in the toilets like of hug, the world... Hugging, hugging Lars. There's the toilet of the world in Japan that is a long banana style <laughs> toilet. That when you walk into the stall and you approach the toilet, you just sit right down facing the wall. What? Facing your friend, your it's, buddy? It's a Japanese style toilet. <laughs> and it's not the only Japanese style toilet either. Josh and I look Toilets of the world dot com. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, um, but that would be a good addition to the toilets of the world. <laughs> we should get out of here. Oh, yeah, we got to go to work. Uh, thank you all for listening. Check out forevermidnight.store for some fun farts and jars. And check out patreon.com slash forevermidnight if you want to hear us talk about some secret things. Thank you for listening, everybody. If you'd like to leave a voicemail, which I encourage you to do. Please do. 707-327-2984. We'll get to it as soon as we can. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. Buddy, bye. bye. See you later. Talk next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> As you're pushing everyone out the room. (laughs) Get the fuck out. Get the fuck out. (laughs) Forever Midnight is recorded at the Scary Movie Research Center in Santa Rosa. The music was written by Josh Staples, recorded by Paul Hale, and performed by Linda Amari, Elliot Whitehurst, Paul Hale, and Josh Staples. For more information, visit forevermidnight.com dot net